Welcome to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. Now, the guest we have today is a well-celebrated artist. She started at age 19 and very soon was on international stages. But her world came crumbling down when she lost her child. And her music career took a screeching halt. Seven years later, she's now back to reclaim her throne. How, you ask? Coming up shortly. Thank you, Sarah Mitaru Kimathi, for joining us. Kim, not Kimathi, but <laughs> <laughs> how should I pronounce it? Kimanti. Kimanti. Any, any. Kimanti is good. Yes. It's so good. I haven't seen you for a number of Imagine. years. I haven't seen you as much as I used to when, uh, you know, there were shows and so on. So I wanted to find out yes. where <laughs> have, have you been, been hiding? <laughs> <laughs> let, let me start with um, you growing up. Tell mm -hmm. us, where did you um, grow up and how did you end up in your singing and uh, music mm -hmm. career? I was born in Canada. Yes. And my parents at the time were students abroad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, typical students, you have chapel. Uh, you go to chapel every yes. three times a week because mm. that's where all your friends are from. Yeah. And I remember my mom... Mm -hmm made me join this children's something mm. at two years old. Yes. And I was the one child singing off key really yeah. loudly. <laughs> Actually there's a tape. I still have yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that too I remember the song. Yeah. So it started off there mm -hmm. and I think because my parents had lived out of the country, yeah. I always say my mother had a dream that we would be like the Jackson Five or yes. something. Yeah. So she would beg us every time and say, please be a singing group as your siblings. Everybody should sing in the house. Yeah. So we came back mm -hmm. uh, home when mm -hmm. we were little and from as soon as I was like three or four, you know how most children watched cartoons on Saturdays? Yes. I was at choir practice every Saturday of my life. I wow. never watched cartoons. Yes. So we just grew up singing. Yeah. Every time there was a guest at home, mm -hmm. we sang a song for them. Yeah. Were so, you attending choir because you liked yeah, it? Or no, no, I think it we, was it was not, we didn't like it. <laughs> Yeah. She did not give us an a option. choice. Yeah. Give us a choice. Yeah. I think she had a vision that we would be musicians. Yeah. At least I would. And so from that, mm. it just grew on me. Yeah. And it was the thing that I knew how to do very well. Mm. So then, obviously, one thing leads to another. When you've done choir musicals, church yeah. musicals from when you were four or five, yes. yeah. it becomes second nature. Mm. And then towards high school... I now started toying with the idea of yeah. taking it seriously. Yeah. So even when I was in college, yes. I had a job yeah. in college yeah. and I was still running off to some show somewhere. Yeah. And what, what did you study? Was it music? A Bachelor of Commerce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a business major. Yeah. Yeah. I actually start, did nothing mm. to do with music yeah. um, as far as my education is concerned. Yeah. Is it yes. because you were thinking your career wouldn't be in music? You wanted something else? or? Well, I think I was raised by the generation that did not see music as a full-time career. Okay. And I think they were very skeptical in those days. Yes. So so it was mandatory for us to have a degree or go to college mm. and saying that you're studying music was like absolutely not yeah so the thing that seemed closest that was not medicine or law yes. was <laughs> commerce and marketing yeah so that's how I ended up doing it but now mm. in retrospect because music is now about entrepreneurship you find that both worlds yes, meet yeah. at one point or yes, another. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And then did you get a job in yes, I, I, business I and what? marketing? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I actually, there was a time I was selling billboards in Lunga Lunga industrial area. What? Yeah. Because we had no <laughs> job. Yeah. But it was, the irony was the first time I used to sing backing vocals for Ari Quen, Eric mm -hmm. Quenena. Yes. So I would be on Lunga Lunga Road and then I ran to sing backing vocals for him and then I jumped on another show. Yes. So I was juggling two worlds. Yes. And I realized more and more that I did not like yeah. the job. Yes. I just wanted to sing. Mm, but yeah. talking about juggling jobs, I think it's, is it something that um, in your experience a lot of artists have to go through, mm -hmm. um, especially in Kenya, mm -hmm. that their music career mm -hmm. can't feed them. So you have to have two or three jobs? I think in the, if you, it depends on what generation you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, we as the millennials, yes. um, were kind of the pioneers where 
being a full-time musician yeah. and doing nothing else and you're more or less rebellious. Obviously, the generation before us was more aggressive. Yes. Uh, but then we fed off the, the, how they pushed the system. Yeah. So to answer your question, because mm. I haven't answered it, it's more of an identity issue mm -hmm. as compared to a financial issue. Yeah. And the identity being clear that I am a musician. Mm. Um, it was very, at the time, there's a lot of stereotypes with introducing yourself in a space yes. and saying I'm a singer, mm. while your peers were probably doctors and yes. lawyers yeah. and businessmen, you know. Mm. So you struggled within yourself yeah. to say who you are. Yeah. And you probably, at least I came from a space where that was not the norm. Yeah. So it's not, before people have the discussion about the financial issue, I think it's an identity. Because then when a person is clear that they want to be a musician, mm. they do whatever it takes to yeah. keep their head above water, yeah. to get their music out, to even make a living off of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when did you decide to now get into your <laughs> music <laughs> career and stop selling billboards? I was on 19. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, was mm. I was 19 at mm -hmm. the time. So yeah. I was like, this is not working. Um, so... I worked in media and then I told my boss that if I don't quit my job, mm. I'll have an identity crisis. So I need to travel to another country where I don't know anybody yes. and start from the mm. ground up so that for the rest of my life, I will always know this is what I'm meant to be. Yes. So I quit my job. Mm -hmm. I told my parents goodbye. And, and I jumped on a plane and I went to the UK. How was that so upset. <laughs> <laughs> they were really upset. Yeah. So I jumped on a plane and I went to the UK with mm -hmm. the clothes on my back. Yeah. And I told myself, I'll sing at three bars. Mm -hmm. And every time I sing, yeah. I, I was like, God, I just want three people to ask me for a gig. Yeah. Every time I sing. I said, my voice should be enough to sell itself. Yeah. So I walk into a bar mm -hmm. and I just said, just... Why the UK? Because first I think it was near a home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think so. Yeah. Um, I knew a couple of people okay. there so I could sleep on their couches. Yes. Um, and America felt like this big, scary yeah. wolf. Yeah. But I wanted to go somewhere where I didn't know anybody yeah. and I didn't have networks. Yeah. And see whether it was enough yeah. to just be a singer. Yeah. If so your voice is... If my voice is enough. Yes. Is it a currency? Yes. That's what I was actually yeah. trying out. Is it a currency? Is mm. my gift a currency? Yes. So I walk into a bar and I sing. And after someone is like, oh, that was really great. Yes. Can you come sing tomorrow? I'm like, yes. Yeah. Then I'm, I sang again and someone's like, oh, I play guitar. Can I play yeah. guitar with you? Yes. yes. So I did that for like, and every night mm -hmm. I was booked for a gig wow. and paid. Yes. So after doing it for like a month or two, mm -hmm. I had a band. I had collected. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the I don't know. Band. Do you have a name? It's just... A guitarist, yeah. 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 I had a band. Mm -hmm. Before I knew it, I had been called yeah. by somebody who came to a different bar mm -hmm. to perform at the Glasgow Film Festival. Yeah, wow. So then I thought, this is great. Yeah. And so I stopped it when um, there was a... Um, they were doing a cover of mm -hmm. What the World Needs Now yeah. for Stevie Wonder and Bono. Yes. And then somebody told them, there's, there's a girl who's been singing in the bars who sounds like this and this yeah. and this. So I get a phone call mm -hmm. from London and they're like, would you like to sing on the track? Wow. I said, yeah. <laughs> so I go to London with the last coins that I have. Yes. And after that, I packed up and came home because mm. I now knew yes. this is enough. Yes, Th that your voice it's is, enough. is a kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you come back home. Did it feel like, okay, now we are starting again square it, I think it, one? I think... I had, I now, that phase for me was part of the musical identity, yes. not personal identity, mm -hmm. but musical identity yeah. to know this is what I do, this is what I'm good at, this is how I want to do mm -hmm. it. Um, coming back home was a very, and this was a long time ago, yeah. so coming back home was also a different journey mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. Because I came back home... Then I found this guy. Then yeah. I married him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us that story. Oh you had come. You had come for how many? I had come how, for how three many? weeks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you were coming for three weeks to, and leave, and then weeks. what happened? It's, a, it's really, it's terrible. Aspana in the works. <laughs> in the uh -huh. I remember I came home, yeah. and um, at the time, mm. <laughs> I thought to myself, okay, I need to go. Those this studio called Kijiji, where mm. Kanji used to work. And yeah. I thought, let me go see some friends of mine and mm. say hi. Yeah. And so there was this guy that, am I really telling my last story on television? 
<laughs> Love <laughs> stories are always interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kijiji. Kijiji. There are no secrets. <laughs> With Kijiji. the whole world. <laughs> Only you, There's Cynthia. There's a public wedding, so there's no <laughs> secrets. <true. laughs> so I, I come. Yeah. And um, there's a, so a drama. My yeah. friend Ken was there mm. and I have this newspaper. Yeah. And there's this guy standing next to him and I'd heard about him and everything. And for some reason, I don't know why, I hit him with the newspaper. Yeah. And um, he says, you know, if you want to have a conversation with me, mm-hmm. you don't have to hit me with a newspaper. You can, <laughs> you can say hi. Yeah. You can talk. Like, this is a rude man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, dear. Yeah. So I said, yeah. Mm. I mean, like, you, if you want to talk to me, you know, I, I said something smart. Yeah. You. He said, no, stop trying to get my attention. Let's go sit there and have a conversation. Said, yeah. Yes, yes, let's <laughs> sit like, I was just being rude. Yeah. And so we sat down and he turned and he said, Uh huh, so mm-hmm. you have my attention. Yeah. And I thought what's the one thing you can ask a guy that will make sure you never talk to each other again? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> I, said, I, just, yeah. I said, Where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah. I should never have asked that question. You expected him to go blank. I expected but him you to say answers. what will happen. Yeah. He said, buy a car. Yeah. 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 I expected an outrageous thing. Yeah. And it was the most intelligent conversation I had ever sat in and yeah. listened to. And I was like, this guy is yeah. crazy. Yeah. And six months later, I was engaged. Like, really? <laughs> Rude answers can Rude get your answers husband. answers can yeah? get your <laughs> Yeah. What? I can't even <laughs> believe you've made me do that. Probably, only you. <laughs> so, but both of you are in music. We're in music. Yeah. So it turns out, I didn't know yeah. because I, I wasn't mm-hmm. here at the time. He didn't tell me he was a music producer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all this while, I thought, I have a guy who just hangs around the studio. Can yes. you see how naive I was? <laughs> and he was, I guess he was, he, he was like, you must know yeah. that I am a producer. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, one day when we are walking and people are shouting his name, I'm like, is this, is this something you need to tell me? <laughs> yeah. And he said, you're so mm. naive. Yeah. Like, how did you not pick yeah. it? So it turns out he's a music producer mm. and a really good one for that matter. Yes. And a very good songwriter. Yeah. So we actually, our first date was the first Sauti Soul concert, mm. I think. And yeah. we had gone and I was singing with them at the time. Yeah. And as they say, the rest is history. Mm. So I now have a musical family. Yes. So I came from a musical family. I created a musical. Created a musical From family. rude responses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what so I need to do for my next date. But I, 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 when we come back, you, you've been silent for a very long time and out of the country. Um, and part of it is because something tragic happened. And I want to get those details, (laughs) that and more, coming up shortly after the break. Welcome back to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. Before the break, we were talking to Sarah Mitaru Kimandi. Now I got it. You got it? And just finding out a little bit about her background Mm -hmm. and your love life. (laughs) Unbelievable. And the rude answers (laughs) that got your husband. (laughs) So we, we saw you for a long time mm-hmm. um, performing public, mm-hmm. um, and in the public eye and then suddenly um, you went silent. Mm. What, what happened? I think uh, my last single was my last single was released in 2013. Yes. I did a collaboration with BN at the time. Yeah, um, I remember. I just finished my album, mm. but at the time I had had my firstborn daughter. Yes. So I was pregnant with my secondborn daughter. Mm. But what I didn't anticipate is that she would be born as a special needs child. Yes. And she would only live for mm. about, I think, eight or nine months. About yes. eight or nine months. Mm. So that happened. Yeah. And that was a very, very big shift mm. in in my life yes because from that moment i became very introspective Mm -hmm. so i usually say my journey of identity started in 20 Mm. 2013 2014 yes so i had a musical identity at least i believe but i didn't have a personal identity yes so that was the beginning of really really finding out who i am why am i on earth because then when when trauma yes. or something difficult is yeah. thrown at anybody, mm. 
it it's like a you're hit by a truck yes. it gets to you yeah so it two things can either happen either mm-hmm. you're thrown against something yeah. or you have to keep turning and turning until yeah. you pivot yeah. into something else yes so um honestly speaking mm-hmm. i think i've not been active for so many years yeah i think i probably just before the pandemic mm. um and was out of the country as well yes i was in the process of saying okay yeah i think i think i can do this yeah. again yeah um i struggled with whether or not i want to pursue music again mm. full time mm. because mm-hmm. it just it just threw me into a huge thinking space yes um that made me know that whatever decisions i make yeah I will become somebody completely different. Yes. yes. I I like that the personal um identity and just for people to understand viewers uh who are maybe even going through the same mm-hmm. um if we could we couldn't go back a mm-hmm. little bit to the beginning mm-hmm. how did you find out uh that you have a child a special needs um child? They didn't pick it during the scans. Mm. I literally remember that when she was born the nurse said something is wrong. Yeah. And even my doctor looked and said I don't know. I'm not sure because mm-hmm. she looked like she could there's something wrong yeah. but you know nurses who've been in hospital can pick a child yeah. and immediately yeah. tell me there's a problem. Yeah. So we were in denial mm. a lot for I think a couple of weeks. Yes. And there seemed to be hope that yeah. nothing is wrong. She just yeah. looks a little bit different. Yes. So we then did a test out of South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um and the weight was just I think the worst. Yeah. Um because it did feel at the time mm-hmm. like this is not anything that life has prepared yes. you for yeah. or anything that you have a frame of reference mm. as to how to react how to behave yes. what to do mm. who to talk to yeah. so it's like opening a whole new door mm. so then we got the results and she had down syndrome yes and um i think the the first initial wounding was mm. what do we do yes. you know then now we reached acceptance so mm. you quickly go through all these emotions and then you realize this is a child this is a beautiful child yes. we love her she's ours mm. so then you reach acceptance yes. so by the time she passed on mm. now just when you reach acceptance then yes. now she's not with you anymore yeah. so that roller coaster mm. was very difficult yes. i mean it still is because the nature of grief is it sits with you yeah for the rest of your life mm. it just transitions how how it appears at every stage of your life is going to look different yes until you die but mm. it will sit with you yes so it has sat with me very differently mm. um and been probably one of the most significant um things that happened that mm. changed yeah. the dna of who i am yes. then and yes. who i am now mm. yes who are you now I think right now mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to share my weaknesses. Yes. If I was to summarize it in yes. one sentence. Yes. Why why are you not afraid? Because I have come to understand that weakness is strength. Yes. And um and it's okay. Mm. But before I was more trying to prove to everybody including myself yes. that I was something or that I'm somebody mm. until you reach the end and you realize I'm actually not yes. you know yeah so I am I'm weaker yeah much more weaker yeah but better for it yes because in within that weakness is actual is actual strength yeah but you you first have to be yeah. like that I'm yeah weak. yeah yes and and how has that um self a journey of finding yourself been like what are some of the things you were surprised to find out about yourself i think what i had not anticipated is that i would really struggle with with relationships mm. um being in the public is a very difficult thing and anybody who's in the public will tell you this mm. There's a gray area where you don't know who your friend is and That's you don't true. know who you, the fan is. That's true. It's a very big gray area. Mm. And so what happens is you live in the high and you find that um I mean just go to social media if I post something 55 yeah. people will comment mm. or if you post something 55 yeah. people will comment. 
So you have this utopian world yes. that you live in mm. where people are validating you yeah. and you feed off it. Mm, mm. Um, and so the, this gray area over time, if you don't watch it, becomes really, 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 really big. Yes. So now you don't know who's, mm. who is supposed to be in your life, yeah. who's not supposed to be in your life, who is a friend, who is an, a foe, mm. and um, who, who is in your life so that you become better, or yeah. who is in your life because you'll be stagnant for, yes. for the longest time. Yeah. So trauma, trauma is a good thing mm -hmm. in one way, yeah. in that it's a sieve. Mm -hmm. Ah. It will sift out for you yes. who is legit mm. and who's not. Mm. And, and it's, it's an opportunity to take it very seriously. And you know the world as it is, mm. is going through trauma. Yes. There's nobody that I know who hasn't lost somebody or yeah. knows somebody who hasn't lost somebody. Mm. So it's usually, I say at, at the most basic level, mm. look at the sea. Yes. Who is standing right by you? Mm. You know? Yeah. Who is they are not in the moment, but even after the moment. Yes. And what happens is those are the re the relationships that become lifetime relationships. Mm, mm. One of the weaknesses is uh, I was just not able to be surrounded by people that were unkind. Yes. Um, because I, w I didn't realize that for so many years, mm -hmm. I was so weak and so wounded that I had been pretending to be very strong yes. and very aggressive and mm. very bold mm. while everything just seemingly seemed to hurt me yeah. subconsciously mm. and I was letting it out in other ways. And yes. the people that I was supposed to love the most were recipients of complete hurt mm. because I was balancing something I didn't even understand. Yes, yeah. So it's a sieve. Mm. Yeah. Uh, talking about uh, relationships, um, sometimes marriages don't um, survive mm -hmm. a trauma uh, such as losing a child. Mm -hmm. How did your marriage and your husband <laughs> you know, brought you here today? But how did your marriage survive um, such a traumatic event? I think it would be unfair to mm -hmm. say that our marriage survived such a traumatic mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. because we, I keep cracking this joke, I, say, I, I, I literally, I am not, I'm not public with my relationship yes. and thank you Cynthia very much for <laughs> just hanging it out there for everybody to try, mm. for everybody to see, not for everybody We are learning, oh, we are learning. Goodness. See I got to you see? To get a husband. <laughs> Be rude, <laughs> ask rudely. Um, we have had yeah. our fair share of difficulty yeah. in, in a way that I think is, has been both private and public. Yeah. Uh, by difficulty, I mean whatever could have been thrown at us mm. has, and we discovered we we failed. Yeah, you know we mm. failed mm. absolutely and completely. Mm. But there was somebody standing on the wings, always helping us to patch things together. Yes, and it's because I'm a Christian. Say so God always, 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 always mm. has a somebody standing on the wings. That's ready to true. patch things together. Yes. So I would, n I'd be lying if mm. I said that. No, you know, we were just, we had this great foundation. Oh my gosh, such a lie. Yeah. I think we failed. Mm. Um, but we also rebuilt. Yeah. And are still learning how to rebuild. Mm. So if you go back to the context where I said I am weak, yeah, it has also made me realize that, mm. apart from grace and mercy, yes, I cannot account to saying that my marriage is yeah. amazing, yes. was amazing. Yeah. It can literally only have been a miracle. Mm. Um, and so all these people, um, like for us, it's, we have a pastor. Yeah. And Pastor Pete, I usually say, is like the guy, he lives in our bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, we've gone for therapy. Yeah. We've gone for counseling. Mm. We've, there's so many things yeah. that have been thrown at us mm. that have been like, as if we were in a sinking ship mm. and somebody always threw a life jacket yeah. and the life jackets eventually get us to the shore mm. and then we can start to build something yes and so the journey is really about that whole process mm. of even realizing that there's a lot of me that needs to be working yeah so now for 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 two creatives mm -hmm. um 
I think we feel things more. Yeah. I think we carry a lot more mm. pain yeah. for a longer period of time. Mm. And we are very terrible communicators to people who are not in our spaces. Yes. So we isolate and mm. shut down. Yeah. But in that small circle, mm. there are certain people that always have access. Yeah. So it's easy for the smaller circle to understand. Mm. Very difficult for the for even family yeah. to, to relate with was mm. What's yeah. Going on? Yeah. I hope I've answered your question. You, you have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm also thinking about music, mm -hmm. uh, because music a lot of times is an expression mm -hmm. uh, of of self, and mm -hmm. a lot of times um, we see artists writing about stuff that they have gone through, mm -hmm. or even completely shut down mm -hmm. and they cannot write mm -hmm. and perform when mm -hmm. they are going through a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your experience like? How did this experience change? your career and, and mm -hmm. music for you? So there are some things I have never been able to sing about. Yes. I don't think I'm ready to yeah. sing about. I have mm. never sung about the death of my child. Mm. And this is how many years later? Seven. Okay. Seven to eight. I yeah. have never been able to mm. gather this, this strength yes. to be able to do it. Mm. Because as I said, one of the things I discovered is that grief sits with you and it, yes. it shows itself different every time. But what 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 it allowed me to do mm. is so if i was this sensitive yes i'm now this sensitive yeah so i can tell somebody else's story in a mm. song in a way that they will ask me how did you know yes it allows me into an emotion yeah that sometimes words fail mm. but then i have the words to be able to explain that emotion yes so then i find the i call it the sweet spot mm where I communicate the emotion so that from a universal place, anybody would be like, yeah, 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 I felt yeah, that. Yeah. Um, how has it affected how I sing? I am a little bit more meaningful mm, okay. with how I communicate through music. Mm. So a lot of the songs that I write they've made sense to me yeah you know how i'm not comparing myself to adele i'm mm. giving her as an example <laughs> adele once did an interview and she said mm. in her proper british accent mm. i cannot do i can't sing a song that rihanna wrote yeah because i don't know what she was going through yeah you know? she was like i can't i can't sing a song yeah that you wrote because mm. i don't know mm. what you are going through yeah. so she she's writing even with her single that she just released mm. This is what I have been feeling. Yeah. This is what I have learned. Or this is, this is how it looks like on this show. Mm. Or this is how it looks like on that show. Yes. So definitely any form of life trauma mm. will, if you're an artist, yeah. will always take your art to the next level. Wow. Always. Yes. Always. I feel yeah. like it's the, the gift yeah. of the pain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That pain always a comes. Gift yeah, the pain. A gift for yeah. the pain. Yeah. But are we going to hear any new music of from course, you? Of course, of course. I just okay. Uh, <laughs> you, have, you have to dish out the exclusive. I just, <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, um, I think one of the things in the period that I learned, mm. and sometimes I like to th be introspective and think a lot. So yeah. bear with me. Is when you have children, you're building generationally mm. so you're handing over something from one generation to another if i never fully reach the extent of what i am supposed to be on earth i have de i've denied my children that's true the ability to become everything that they can be yes because if i am the giant then it's my shoulders mm. that they're supposed to stand yes, on, stand on yeah. so if i look at it practically in my life my grandfather was a poor man from the village yeah right with patched mm. trousers but he took his children to school yes my let's say my dad mm. he took my dad to school mm. my dad never wore shoes until he was in standard three you yeah. know we, we all know these stories yes but i wore shoes since i was born mm. right so because each one of them came out of comfort into a place whereby they did all they possibly could we are the beneficiaries so even in the art space one of the things that I had to reconcile is that I just, I really must do everything that I can to be everything that I was supposed to be on this yes, app. Yeah. Because be right next to me is another little me mm. and another little David. Yes. Um, 
that are staring at us yeah and we, they only they'll only move as far mm. as we are able to move yes so that's that's i think that was my number one mm. motivation to being okay yes, yeah I'm, I'm going to keep at this even if i feel old yeah, <laughs> yes yes and i watched i've watched it manifest in their lives yeah. even at a really young age yeah you had another child after that yes is there fear that i might go through the mm -hmm. same thing and the same mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. um that i went through before absolutely yeah i have two i actually have two children mm. and um there's some things i'm not able to do because yeah. i picked my daughter from the court day mm. I, I don't i struggle to put babies in courts yes till now mm. like even with my friends yeah and it's um it's you know how somebody after a difficult thing they work with a limp yeah so mine is i, I have a healthy fear of baby courts um and lifting children and, and mm. this and if a child is sick yeah um m every time any of our children are sick my friends take turns mm. in texting and calling and, yeah. and saying it's fine it's mm. okay it's yeah. going to be fine mm. so it 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 never i don't think it really really goes away but there's somebody why said that alongside grief is joy and sometimes you just have to make a decision to be intentional about being joyful and pursuing joy and understanding joy and embracing joy yes. so that is embracing it yes uh because those two mm. are supposed to be each other because yeah. sometimes you just walk down the dark grieving path yeah. It's just, yeah it's just dark dark dark, dark. Mm. so there is it's just right next to you yes um now that's obviously the summarized version that's a lot of mm -hmm. work inside yes. taking yourself mm -hmm. all those things mm -hmm. but yeah yeah i do yeah i also I, I'm just, every time I see a special needs child, mm -hmm. I, 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 there's a heaviness yeah. that I carry, mm. um, with that. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, anybody around me who gets pregnant, mm. I'm traumatized from the beginning. Yes. I'm praying. I'm like, it's going to be fine. You mm. know? Yeah. So it, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I get, now I get it when you see the grief um sits with you yeah when are we likely to receive your new album my new album <laughs> <laughs> and has after, after has talking your, about dark your, things your genre changed yes, the yes, theme yes. and yeah, yeah definitely yeah um so my music is I, I mean i'm married to a music producer yes so that's a good thing and a bad thing because mm -hmm. when you're married and you're a music producer, yeah. if you're the wife, ninety percent of the time you say no, no, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Think that's good. <laughs> yeah. Right? If it's a guy you're paying, yeah. he says sing like this. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a yeah. good idea. They don't know. Yeah. No. I don't think like, but I'm the expert. Yes. No, but but we live together. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um I've actually just um re I am just released my mm. single yes which was shot during the pandemic mm. um it's a love song it's called my baby yeah so i you know how i'm heavy as a person with conversation yeah no my music is not going to yeah. punch somebody <laughs> <laughs> otherwise everybody will need yeah a strong drink on their <laughs> yeah. you know, um it's it's a club song so it should um, yes it should do mm. fairly well yeah i think in, yeah. in the club you can dance to yes, more or less. yeah i'm looking forward to to the journey of music mm. but in a different way yeah you know yeah in a in a more vulnerable mm. way mm. um any collabs i've done one yes um am i allowed to talk about this yes <laughs> It's an interview. <laughs> I've done one with a Niger so so yes. I had a dream night. I guess I can't say his name. Yeah, I okay. And this dream Nigerian yes, artist. Yeah. And wow, um, we're looking forward to that. He he said yes. Yes. So we, we started writing the music in the pandemic and yeah. he said, Yeah, yeah, I'd like to be on the song. Mm. Um and I was like, What? Yes. <laughs> because he's 
we kind of share the same style of music yeah. and the same writing yes. and everything. Yeah. So yes, there is. Mm. Actually, it's actually recorded. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. We're looking forward to that. And thank, thank you. you so much You're so um, for opening up about a very difficult situation um, that you went through and opening up about the time, one time that you were so vulnerable. Thank you so You're much. So and if there's one thing I've learned from Sarah today is a different definition of what pain is. And something interesting that she said, that uh, pain has a gift. And when we're going through pain in our lives, it actually takes us to a higher level, a different level. See you next time.